I can't think of a more apt guest to have an honour in an event in Melbourne, the most locked down city in the world. Who would have thought that here in Australia, a curfew that we didn't even know in wartime would have been imposed? Playgrounds shut, religious last rites refused, pregnant mums arrested in their kitchen, and that just standing still in a park would have constituted a crime. Or that peaceful protesters around our shrine of remembrance would have been forcibly dispersed by hundreds of riot police using tear gas and rubber bullets. Rubber bullets in this country against our own. Or that restrictions, like we saw in Melbourne or perhaps only a little less draconian interstate, would have been imposed in Australia without any parliament making any of it subject to a full debate, partly because we move fast to emergency rule and partly because no one in authority wanted to test the health advice. Instead, they hid behind it. How this could have happened, one might ask, in a nation descended from chronic lawbreakers. The truth, as Clive James might have noted, is that there's far more prison warden than convict in our DNA. Or perhaps it was fear that even democratic, loving Australians felt and were brought to heel. Yet there are a few brave souls ready to speak up for freedom and to assert that we cannot let fear of dying stop us from living. As early as May 2020, our guest of honour had the courage and the insight to declare COVID, he said, is not the greatest crisis in our history. It's not even the greatest health crisis in our history. But the lockdown is, without a doubt, the greatest interference with personal liberty in our history. He's not just here at the right place, he's here at the right time. I'm not sure whether this was um, Georgina's special prescience all those months ago when we secured our speaker, or whether assaults on fundamental freedoms are now so commonplace, especially here in Melbourne, that any friend of freedom is likely to arrive at a critical time. But what better time to have someone like Lord Sumption in our midst than in the aftermath of a man losing his job, not for anything he did, but because in his church someone else preached a sermon that he did not hear that he did not know about, that he did not approve, not last month, but nine years ago. We're no less a personage than the head of Victoria's Human Rights Agency commented favourably on this sacking, and a self-serving premier as well. Jonathan Sumption, one of England's top lawyers, appeared last week in that kangaroo court of Q&A to make the case for freedom and he was brave and awe-inspiring. Finally, it's fitting that an institute named after our longest-serving Prime Minister should have as guest of honour a man who emulates Benzies in being brilliant at many things. He is our guest of honour tonight, one of life's great polymaths. Had Menzies not become Prime Minister, he would likely have been a High Court judge. Had Jonathan Sumption not become a judge, he could have become one of England's greatest historians based on the well-regarded books he's already penned or perhaps a linguist given his command of eight languages. I mean, if not on the bench, goodness, he might have been Prime Minister given a bit like us, they're turning them over by the minute. On behalf of the board of the Menzies Institute, the Robert Menzies Institute, 
it is my pleasure to welcome Lord Jonathan Sumption, judge, historian, a fighter for intellectual freedom to Melbourne, a city where his words of wisdom are tonight needed now more than ever. <laughs> 